we are live good evening and a warm welcome to all bskb association popularly known as gopul is a 96 year old charitable trust in mumbai and our activities include a community center at sain and a home for senior citizens at nerul in navi mumbai with over 5000 members we have been actively interacting for religious cultural and social causes in this time of covid bskba youth wing is conducting sunday interactive sessions along with the talent hunt series today we present to you a talk by mr magesh shrinivasan on digital transformation of the global automotive industry mr magesh shrinivasan is a global thought leader in digital transformation He has studied B.Sc in Environmental Sciences from Saint Joseph's, Bangalore, M.B.A. from Indo-German Training Center, Mumbai, and Senior Executive Leadership Program from MIT Sloan of Management, USA. Mr. Magesh created DataMentor.co.in with a mission to create digital transformation mindset across organizations, so that the true value can be unlocked by business leaders. fully aligned with sdg and esg sustainability goals in his professional professional life of over 23 years he has worked with leading brands such as bosch black and decker sony blopunk hcl technologies and zf groups and has also created pioneering success across six global tech mncs as a global citizen having traveled worked and lived across regions he aims to mentor people to help them realize and achieve their higher potential we welcome you mr magesh and request you to take over thank you very much uh, tanvi let me share my presentation and we can begin I hope my slide uh, is uh, clear and visible. A warm welcome to everyone joining from uh, different parts of uh, India and perhaps uh, outside of India as well. And um, uh, today's topic is a very interesting uh, topic: digital transformation of the 21st century uh, is what we're living through as global citizens. And I'm going to speak of uh, one specific case. a case that all of us are witnessing in this uh, day and age and that is the conversion of the automotive powertrain from gasoline and diesel into electric mobility so i've called this presentation an electric horse meets a diesel dinosaur it's a metaphor and it's based on an article that i had written and published in 2018 So let's get started. So Tanvi has given a broad introduction to uh, my profile, and I would like to say a few more words in order to illustrate my mission in life, and uh, that is the reason why I'm putting up this particular slide. So I have three goals for you know the second innings in my life. and that is to work towards development of people and bring in leadership skills second is to work towards projects which are creating a green planet and inspiring people to not only protect preserve but to make sure that our posterity that is the legacy that we leave for our children and grandchildren is secure so people planet and posterity these these are the goals and milestones of my life with that in mind i created data mentor which is a b2b portal and through this portal the aim is to create digital awareness and this digital awareness will allow young people to not only understand technology but be able to create careers and success in their own lives in order to carry forward their journey in the 21st century also uh, the endeavor is to offer 
consulting and strategic visioning for corporates, especially keeping in mind environment as the core philosophy as sustainability is the core value driver for 21st century. Most of the corporates in the world have announced their sustainability goals and outcome milestones for 2030, 2040, and 2050. And now we have to together make sure that these milestones are achieved in order to protect, preserve our planet for the people and make sure that we have a bright future ahead. And in the equation, people are most important. And keeping that in mind, I've also created Mentor Max, which is a website for leadership development and life coaching. And I'm hoping to make sure that whoever needs help in visioning their own personal life and developing their own higher potential, I'm able to help them in their path. So th with these few words, let's get into the presentation deck. So in 2018, I authored uh, and published two articles while I was working for HCL Technologies. The first one is called An Electric Horse Meets a Diesel Dinosaur. And this is a story that we're going to discuss in detail. And the other one is called The Next Mobile is the Automobile. And we will be mentioning about some insights from this article as well in this particular presentation. A lot of people are thinking about how the automotive industry has been contributing towards the global development in all countries. But very few of us know that in 1899, in Berlin, there was an international motorsport competition. And in this international motorsport competition, the winner was an electric vehicle. And this electric vehicle was designed, fabricated, and demonstrated as a winner by a gentleman called as Herr Ferdinand Porsche, who is the founder of the Volkswagen Group. He was an inventor, and an inventor par excellence, far ahead of his time. And you can see in the picture here, the first electric vehicle, which is now at the Stuttgart Museum in Germany. Now, because this particular invention was done while he was working for another organization, unfortunately, this invention never came into commercial manufacturing. Instead, the diesel-based cars and automobiles came into mass manufacturing, and the history of the world, as we have witnessed it, was completely based on fossil fuels. Otherwise, had the first electric vehicle become successful, we would have achieved a lot of progress, not only in the automotive technologies, but also in making sure that mobility would have been green for the last 135 years. So that's where everything started 135 years ago. The game was between electric vehicle versus diesel-based engines, which was finally, we know what happened. Now, if you ever wonder how cars are made, now, this particular slide explains in a very simple way what goes into manufacturing an automobile. And as you can see here, there's an acronym on the slide, and the acronym is BICEPS. So B stands for body. I stands for interiors. C stands for chassis. E stands for electrical and electronics, P for powertrain, and S, now for the last 15 years, is all about software. Yes, you heard me right, software. So BICEP is all mechatronic hardware assembled in a car factory, and all of these components are brought together from various suppliers. And once the suppliers has made available these components, the subsystems are created 
and these subsystems are assembled by human operators and by robots in order to create a automobile but the most important aspect of the automobile today is software and that is why when you look at the advertisement of all cars in newspapers every day you will see a lot of the features which are being advertised are all to do with software these features are very similar to what is being advertised when you look at the promotions made for smartphones and that's the commonness and similarity that has become the center of differentiation to all automotive manufacturers in the world therefore car assembly is simply not just a mechatronic assembly process keeping software and making the software and assembling and making the software work on the road is where the magic is so let's try to understand a little more deeper how this works here so i'm sure you've read in the news every day that owing to the shortage of semiconductor chips the silicon chips exactly the same chips that go into your computer and the chips that go into your in making your smartphone these chips are also going into the electronic control unit of automobiles and today because of the global supply constraint of these semiconductor chips there is a shortage of automobiles that's being manufactured globally and this supply constraint is common across automobile computers as well as smartphones and that is why we, i have titled the slide as the next mobile is the automobile because you can now see that chip based differentiation and software application based differentiation just like you have on your smartphone is beginning to bring benefits to consumers and drivers and passengers who are using the car or the bus or the truck so here is a case in point on the left you can see two models one is the bolt by general motors and the other is tesla model 3 and over here you can see that the car has a forward camera processing unit a driver instrument panel there's a rear view mirror camera there's a parking sensor unit there's a control unit for cent cent center con console and there are various ultrasonic sensors and other sensors similarly in tesla model 3 you can see that you have forward camera processing right hand camera processing left hand camera processing and rear camera processing and several sensors and radars so what does this look like it's very similar to what you have on your smartphone a typical smartphone has anywhere between 26 to 32 sensors and here are some examples you have a temperature sensor pressure sensor fingerprint sensor a magnetometer gyroscope touch sensor microphone of course humidity sensor accelerometer gps sensor the cmos sensor for your camera ambient light sensor and proximity sensor so you can see that the cars are also having many sensors and the smartphone also is increasingly becoming intelligent because of the sensors that's built in in fact what you have the smartphone in your hand today is more powerful than the first supercomputer cray 1 which was launched in 1976 and the cray 1 at that time the price was 2 million dollars and it had a processing power lesser than what you have today in your average smartphone so that gives you an idea where the world has moved with regards to smartphones and computing on smartphone platforms 
in the last 45 years. And whatever you see in the smartphone, this is already being made available in the automobile. And it's being made available faster in the electric automobile. In fact, an electric automobile is nothing but a very big smartphone architecture with four wheels, with very good amount of intelligence and ability to connect to cloud platforms anywhere in the world. And this is the essence of this particular slide. Now, the pandemic has become the most important digital transformation champion of the world today. Because of the pandemic, all companies and citizens around the world who were thinking about digital transformation but were not accelerating the change have now been forced and incentivized purely to survive and grow. They have all moved over into digital companies, into digital value chains. And similarly, in the automotive industry as well, the automobile, whether it's a car, bus, or truck, is also software-defined. The product itself is software-defined. That means the platform, the complete architecture of which is built in while designing this particular automobile is based on software technology. So let's try to understand what is about to happen in the year 2023 and beyond. The first thing that we are going to witness, and some of it is already here in the high-end vehicles, is contextual software, a cognitive cockpit, connected services delivered via your car, in your car, truck or bus, as well as the smartphone connected to your automobile and personalization based on your user behavior, your driving behavior, or the utilization of your automobile for your B2B use cases, such as last mile delivery. But all of this will be possible because now in the back end, when I'm designing the product, such as a car, I'm making sure the software is completely configurable to whatever benefits and functions I want to illustrate in the market. Second, Internet of Cars, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle assisted services, regulated cybersecurity. Now, the moment you have a software-defined car, we now have the ability to communicate to the internet because every car today has a minimum of two SIM cards. One SIM card is to connect the car to the cloud and through the cloud, the car will be able to provide information about its own health and the data that is running inside the car electronics. The second SIM card is meant for infotainment. And this SIM card will allow you access to navigation platforms so that you can have real-time dynamic navigation, very similar and close to what you experience on your Android or iPhones. And once you have the internet of cars, which is today a reality, will only get more and more advanced, it's possible to have vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle assisted services. What it means is, moment we have 5G, which is being built all over the world, cars will be able to speak to each other intelligently, intuitively. Just as today, our smartphones are able to speak to each other through Bluetooth connectivity, through application connectivity, you can establish a link between two smartphones. In a very similar way, dynamically, automobile on the road will have vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle assisted services talking to each other about their health and their driving behavior and their driving pattern. And this becomes extremely useful to deliver 
emergency services, especially when there is a vehicle breakdown or when somebody inside the vehicle is not feeling so well. And because now you're connecting the car or the automobile to the internet, you will need to have cybersecurity. To illustrate this fact, in 2015, ethical hacking teams in the US demonstrated a ethical hack. They actually hacked into a Jeep, which had an infotainment unit. And through the infotainment unit, they could enter the car's software platform and they switched the accelerator function to the brake function. And when they made this swap, the driver demonstrated that while he was trying to brake, he was accelerating. And because of that mishap, the Jeep got derailed off the road. And this was to demonstrate that hackers who are not in the car, who are at a remote location, can have access to your car. Therefore, cybersecurity is now extremely important even for vehicles, not just your smartphones, not just, your, not just to secure your laptops and computers, but also automobiles which are connected to the internet. Software-defined platform, all IP architecture and automotive blockchain. So in simple words, software-defined platform is nothing but the entire design of the automobile is being created first in a computing system and completely simulated for fitness of quality. And once it is, the design is passed on a software platform, only then a actual mechatronic product is produced and tested on the road. So a lot of the car is now based on platform design. And from that software platform design, you can create different models. And all IP architecture implies that Unlike the old legacy cars, where you actually had wires and cables weighing a few hundred kilos in each car, or in each truck and each bus, that is now going to be replaced by IP cables or internet protocol cables, the same cables with which you create a local area network, a LAN cable as we say it, and you will see this particular LAN cable when your modem is being installed for your broadband connection at home. So similar cables are being implemented within your car. This will reduce the number of wires required for communications between the electronic sensors and ECUs. And it would increase the data throughput, the speed, the quantum and volume of data that is possible to move as traffic inside the different car components. So it has a lot of advantage to have an all IP architecture. Many of the high-end cars today already have implemented this and automotive blockchain. So you have definitely heard of the term cryptocurrency. Now, after the 2008 global financial crisis, we have the Bitcoin. And the Bitcoin was brought about by a platform created called as blockchain. The blockchain platform is completely different from the legacy computing platforms of the world. In that, in the blockchain technology, you have what are known as blocks. And these blocks are nothing but computing infrastructure distributed around the world talking to each other on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, which means that every block has equal opportunity and equal power to transact. And there is no client, there is no server. It's a comprehensive, community-based, peer-to-peer architecture. Now, in simple words, what it implies is you now have the ability to redefine how computing systems work and the benefits of blockchain can be brought into the automotive 
industry as well. And this is what we are going to see as we move forward into, the, into this decade. Fourth is increased mergers and acquisitions and investment, cross-industry partnerships, rise of artificial intelligence and security startups. All of these commercial news is coming to us every day through the media. You can see that very large companies and brands are coming together in order to create a new solution, a new way of moving in order to redefine mobility. A lot of the traditional players are joining hands with very innovative startups in order to create new age electric vehicle. For example, Ola, which was a uh, platform-based car ride-sharing company, has entered into automotive business by making investment in an electric scooter, electric vehicle factory in India. Similarly, you have many of the traditional OEMs invest in EV startups all over the world, including India. And you would see that a lot of people who are entering the smart mobility business and the automotive business are not necessarily from the automotive industry. They have perhaps very good innovation strength from their software business. They have very good innovation strength and proven expertise in opening, in creating platforms that connect things and people. And using that strength, they are entering the mobility business by joining hands with the legacy or the traditional automotive manufacturers. And wherever there's a lot of data, moment you connect a device to the internet, you now have access to a lot of data. Wherever you have data, you have the opportunity to use artificial intelligence systems. And artificial intelligence systems allow you to create a framework where you can convert data into information, information into knowledge, knowledge into actionable insights and wisdom, real time, and the system can learn from its own observation of the real world and thereby keep on improving the outcomes and output for human beings to have to take advantage of in any sphere of life. It is true even for the automotive business. In fact, it is a function of AI, a benefit of AI that all of us enjoy when we use Google Android based smartphone navigation real time. It is learning from your own driving patterns and it is suggesting to you routes based on historical references that you have allowed it to give as information to the Google servers. So this is an example of AI based application and benefits that we are having on a daily basis in the mobility business. Increased data sovereignty, car data sharing with owner consent, AI-based edge platform. So data sovereignty is all about making sure that any device or device owner who is generating data has complete control on what data the person wants to share with the company which is manufactured the product or company which is connecting the product to the internet. So this is required by law in many countries and therefore most of the automobile will have increased data sovereignty. Car data sharing is already happening and that is how we are able to enjoy the benefits of car ride sharing platforms. And now individually owned cars can also choose to share their car data in the near future in order to make available other kinds of services, which we will see emerge as we go forward into smart mobility ecosystems. And AI-based edge platform. So what it essentially means is, in any computing framework, you have the in-market delivery devices, in this case, let's say a connected car, 
And then you have the cloud platform, which are essentially huge data centers, which are virtualized and sitting thousands of miles away from the actual connected car. So the connected car is called as the edge device. It's the device where all the application layers are orchestrating and manifesting the benefits so that you can drive and enjoy the benefits of a connected car or a connected bus or a connected truck. And the cloud platform is where all the data processing happens. Now, as you can imagine, because there's a difference between uh, in time and distance of the edge device, such as a car, and the connected cloud, connected by the internet and the telecom service provider, there are times when you may not have this connectivity. Then what do we do? Therefore, as we move into improvements in software technology and hardware te embedded hardware technology, cars are being, vehicles are being made with intelligent computing platforms, which can take charge of its own decision making in low latency areas, in low connectivity areas. And that is what is the advantage of AI-based edge platform technology. Mobility as a service, smart lifestyle, peer-to-peer -peer car and ride sharing. So mobility as a service is a very simple concept. And in this concept, the essence is, I would like to move from point A to point B. And how do I make the smartest journey with regards time and cost? And am I moving people? Am I moving myself or am I moving people and cargo? These are the variables or scenarios, if you will. So, in mobility as a service framework, when you want to move from point A to B, it's now possible to plot what is the most optimal route that you need to take and also what is the mode of transportation. So the scenario may look like this, that I would like to move from a point A, which is 50 kilometers away to my destination, which is point B. So the suggestion by the mobility as a service provider could be that I can take a ride-sharing bike, travel for two kilometers to the nearest metro station, take the metro train and ride for the next 48 kilometers and get off at the station which is available at that particular area. And the last two kilometers of my journey I can transact by catching a Uber or Ola, for example. So this is called as mobility as a service in a very simple manner. And there are many applications to this, which essentially is beneficial to the market and to the planet. Because if people can optimize every ride they take and every journey they make against time, the amount of fuel consumed, then we are essentially moving towards a more uh, greener planet with lesser carbon footprint. And if we are using as much as electric vehicles as possible in, you, in, our, in making our journey, then we are increasing our, uh, increasing our green footprint and reducing our carbon footprint. Therefore, mobility as a service is now being designed in many smart cities around the world. And car companies, along with internet-based companies and platform companies, are combining their strengths in order to offer mobility as a service as for people within various cities around the world, as well as to B2B applications where companies can move their cargo and improve their supply chain and reduce the cost of supply chain, improve the logistics in a much more multimodal integrated way. And this is one of the big differentiation where India can gain because our logistics cost, our supply chain cost is one of the highest 
in the world. So we can actually gain many, many points in bettering our GDP as a percentage of GDP by reducing the cost of transportation. So that is the relevance about mobility as a service. Smart lifestyle, because now you have got an ability to actually speak to your car, understand what is the health of your automobile, and take proactive steps, whether it is deciding on your journey plan or deciding on when you want to give your car for service, all of that can be decided even before you actually sit in your car. And peer-to-peer -peer car, car and ride sharing, this is fairly simple. It is already implemented in many cities. It is all about utilizing your car. If it is parked in your garage, you can share your car so that other people can use your car and earn revenue out of that. Personal assistance, facial biometric security, voice recognition. So today you have personal assistance on your smartphone. Even if you're using Android smartphone, you have a personal assistant that is based on your voice and you have facial and biometric security on your smartphone and your voice recognition. All of this is available already in high-end cars today, and it will also become prevalent in the mid-segment and entry-level cars in the years to come. Because as we said, it is all about a software-defined car as we move forward. So this is a summary of what is happening and how it's going to play out as we move forward into the 21st century. Now, let's go a little deeper. In vehicle software defined car act architecture. So how does this all look? Right? So you can see that there are many layers in this sandwich. Now, the only thing that we care about as consumers, as end users, is the user experience. Right? So in the user experience, I want to know how to navigate. I want to know, you know, what's the traffic in my journey. I would like to know what's the performance of my car in terms of the engine, battery, whatever else, uh, tire pressure, for example. I would like to have assistance if I need to, you know, call for emergency assist. And now it's also possible to have bio rhythm sensors in seats where you know the driver and the passengers can actually know what is the status of their health while they're taking their journey just as you have a fitbit in your which is pairing with your smartphone you have sensors which can tell the status of the driver's health driver behavior monitoring while the driver is using the car or driving the car so the user experience is what we want to create and in order to create that where do we begin? So the first layer that you see here is called as ECU, electronic control units. Now these are like the nerve cells, like the neurons in the brain, like in the human brain. So this is where computing happens. And typically every ECU is assigned to a particular function. So you have an ECU, for example, only for the infotainment system. You have an ECU, for example, in uh, if you have an electric vehicle for the state of the battery in the electric vehicle. Now you have an ECU for how the car will assign its braking parameters. You have an ECU for how the car will provide you electronic stability control. So, so on and so forth. So these ECUs are aggregated as per the functions. So the software layer over here that you see, one layer above the firmware, firmware is the software inside these ECUs. And the software layer, you can see here, there is something called as ADAS, which is Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. And that is what we saw in the second slide, where we saw there is a forward camera, reverse camera. So all of these cameras are providing visual intelligence, thereby aiding the driver for better safety while they are driving the car. Then you have LiDAR, which is nothing but a light-based radar. And this gives very strong accuracy in 
three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. And it forms what is called as a point cloud. And why is this important? Because in mapping, when you have a visual map, uh, you can make a high definition map. And in order to increase the accuracy of a high definition map, it's also important to have the third dimension, not just X and Y, not just length and breadth, but also height or depth. And LIDAR allows us, today we have solid state LIDARs, that means LIDARs with no moving parts. So it shoots light rays in 360 degrees and it maps the surrounding environment, literally sensing and creating a spatial awareness of where the car is using light. And you have uh, in-vehicle infotainment system, in-vehicle infotainment system, which completely allows for communications, navigation and mapping, interaction with voice assistants, and everything to do with the driver driving the car and how he or she interacts with the car. And then you have domain controllers, which are essentially making sure that all the subsystems are communicating to each other correctly, real time, and making sure that the data processing between all of this is bi-directional and real time without any stoppage. That's the job of a domain controller. And on top, you have artificial intelligence systems, which is essentially collecting all of this data and then converting this data into what we call as sensor fusion. So it's bringing together data from all the sensors and then the car needs to decide whether it needs to accelerate, whether it needs to brake, whether it needs to turn left, whether it needs to turn right and make those suggestions to a driver. And in a fully autonomous vehicle or a self-driving car, as we say, a driver operator need not be essential all the time. The car can make the decisions, driving decisions based on the visual intelligence acquired by these systems real time. And the driver is brought in only to take charge when there is an emergency as detected by the AI system. And that's how self-driving cars work. There are many levels in self-driving cars. And you can see Tesla, for example, is already uh, using level three in many countries around the world. In, for most part, you can sit in Tesla and it will, it will conduct the ride and you can take charge of the Tesla when the system asks you to take charge. And the goal, of course, is to have a completely autonomous self-driving vehicle. And we are heading towards that becoming a reality one day. And today, that reality is feasible in closed communities where the traffic is guided. For example, airports or campuses, very large campuses, private campuses, where the road is completely managed by private entities and the direction of traffic is completely monitored. Therefore, self-driving self -driving vehicles can work fully autonomously without human operators. And there have been many pilots and some of the successful pilots in real life have been in countries like Singapore with a company called as Newtonomy. So in-vehicle software defined architecture is looking this way in order to give you uh, an overview. And at the top layer, we now have the possibility of over the air updates. That means you can just as on your smartphone, you are able to receive push updates and you can your smartphone once you've completed the update has a new function or it has a new safety feature. Similarly, this is now possible in automobile. So you can have, you can upgrade your maps, your functions in the car can be fixed if there are any problems and the system can keep on getting more functions and better functions out of the same product that you have. AI and cognitive system update, that is possible now because you're connected. And as we said, because there's a level of intelligence in the car as well, this intelligent car, connected car is speaking to the cloud and both are interacting with each other when it comes to deciding what should be the upgrade that each of the subsystems should receive in order for the car to remain healthy and completely function as a normal vehicle, just as you're able to do in a smartphone after you updated a patch. Software and security updates, this is again possible today. 
and reconfigurable hardware sensor fusion of ECU and TCU models. So the reconfiguration of ECU essentially means that if I write a new code of firmware, then the electronic control unit should be able to acquire a new functionality or should be able to upgrade itself to perform a function which was not available in any particular on the first version of the firmware. And this way we, we have seen this happen, you know, in at printers at home, for example, you have a firmware patch which is made by the service engineer, or if the printer is connected to the internet, it is being made remotely, and then you have a new function on the printer. And the same thing happens in your smartphone as well. When, whenever you receive updates, you definitely get new features and functions. So that's a summary of how all of this is coming together and why we said that the car today is all about software. In fact, almost 15% of your car manufacturing cost today is going towards software. So end-to-end -end software defined car architecture. So over here, what this slide talks about is that we have a closed loop architecture, which means that now the cloud, which is over here, is speaking to the connected car, which is over here. And the conversation is bi-directional. Not only are we delivering secure over the air updates, but we are also receiving data into the cloud as to what is the status of the car. And in the cloud, on the cloud side, there are several functions which are mapped and they are mirror images of what is available in the car. In the car, you have the hardware, which is running on the software platform and the software application layer. And in the cloud, you have all the programs which is available in the car reflected and you can see real time what is happening in every automobile. This is called as a digital twin. And the advantage of creating a digital twin is that the manufacturer of the automobile and the suppliers of the parts and components and subsystems of the car now can get real time information on the performance when the car is in on the road. And what is the performance of the car when it has passed 5,000 kilometers, 10,000 kilometers, so on and so forth. So you can study that. And also you can compare and contrast how does a particular car model function in a particular region in the world? You know, how does it work in India, perhaps? How does it work in North America? How does it work in a very cold place, for example? Right? And by studying the various information and data coming from the car real time, you can improve the product and you can improve the future designs. And some of the improvements can already be delivered to the same car by making the software change and pushing that software change over the air. That is the world that we're living in today. And this is very tightly built into a Tesla because a Tesla was designed just like a smartphone from the beginning. So we've looked at a lot of various components and we've spoken a lot about technology. Now let's bring everything together. What exactly is the whole digital transformation all about, right? So this slide is called the connected ecosystem of the automotive industry. So if we go back thousands and thousands of years ago, you know, the prehistoric people, they sculpted a wheel and from that the progress started. They discovered fire, then they discovered wheel with that progress started. Cut to 18th century, the sorry, the latter part of 19th century, you had the automobiles being created and manufactured. And over the last 135 years, you have a structure which is slowly changing into an ecosystem. So the structure as it stood a few decades ago was you had tier two vendors, small factories making small components, tier one suppliers, bigger vendors making subsystems, and then original equipment manufacturers who are the actual brand owners of the car. They assemble the car and then deliver to the market in a brand name. So that is now changing. So the automotive manufacturer is only one part of the equation, a very important one, but only one part. You also have companies which are manufacturing semiconductor chips or rather the brain cell, the neuron, which powers the artificial intelligence in the edge device, in the car, that is. 
And this is called as a neural processing unit. And the intelligence now is embedded within the chip. It's called a system on chip. It's not just, you know, silicon oxide and electricity running on it. It also has its own software and it has its own memory and can think in a certain way and become intelligent upon the way it is configured within the ECUs. So neural processing unit is already in and this is becoming a reality in most cars in the world today. Then you have smartphones, which were launched in 2007 by iPhone, uh, sorry, Apple. And with that, you have the internet connectivity at your touch at, on demand anywhere in the world. And this changed human behavior. Everybody wants to have touchscreen systems. Everybody wants to respond and interact using voice, a voice. And everybody wants to have communications in their own language, uh, whichever they're comfortable with. All of this is being you know, created by the smartphone. And now people expect the same thing to come from the cars as well. So this is what is driving change. This is what is driving innovation within the automotive industry. And therefore, the digitization of the automotive industry is accelerated. And then, of course, the 21st century, all of us, the light generation, where people are spending so much time on social media, it's very important for people to be connected. It's more important to have a smartphone and uh, social media participation than anything else in life today. And this has a huge impact in the way we are designing products. And that's why you find social media links even inside car applications. You can listen to the same playlist that you were listening to on your smartphone. You can watch the same movies. Uh, in The passengers can watch the same movies in the car as well, so on and so forth. And then connectivity. So vehicle to anything is possible. Once 5G comes in, you will have cars talking to the complete infrastructure within a smart city. The intelligent infrastructure in a smart city could be an intelligent traffic management system. So cars and traffic can speak to the intelligent traffic management system so that they can dynamically monitor and make sure the flow of traffic is regulated without human intervention. So that's an example then cars can speak to trucks, trucks can speak to buses and make sure that there's no collision, make sure that the traffic flow is smooth. All of this is being built into smart cities around the world and smart cities around the world will have abilities to communicate with connected vehicles. All of this put together is what we call as smart mobility solutions. And the goal of smart mobility solutions is to achieve zero carbon footprint, which is the primary goal of all business and private and government activity on the planet today. There is nothing more important than making sure that our activity has minimal, minimal carbon footprint and maximum green, uh, green uh, contribution to saving the planet and improving things. So this is the connected ecosystem of the world. And at the center of it is electric mobility. Now we also have hydrogen-based fuel cells and hydrogen-based uh, economy coming about, which will accelerate the change towards a greener and smarter connected ecosystem around the world. So what are the key takeaways? Number one, in-vehicle architecture is here to stay. This will only become more and more prevalent, which allows us to reconfigure the car the car that you bought and the car that you use a few years later can be completely different in terms of functionalities, just like your smartphone. Closed loop architecture. Essentially, the car is able to speak to the cloud. The cloud is able to speak to the car. And this connection is possible to keep as long as there is telecom connectivity. And telecom connectivity will only keep on improving as we move towards 5G. And even if telecom community, uh, connectivity is not there, the car itself will be intelligent enough to manage on its own uh, because of edge intelligence, which is being built in. Connected services, OEM and ecosystem partner applications and services will be key to the software defined car era. So you can see that a lot of the OEMs are changing the business models. Today, you can virtually order your car on the platform 
have a virtual demo, even choose what elements you want your car's car to look like in terms of cosmetic changes, and then you can have your car delivered at your doorstep. And this is happening today, and this will only get better as we move forward. New business models are emerging, and the new business models, you don't have to pay for the car upfront. You can pay as you go. You can pay per mile. You can pay per kilometer. And all of this is coming into play, not just from the financial institutions, but also OEMs themselves. They are innovating the way they will deliver the product, not just as a product, but also with value-added services. And the last point is technology and timing. Success in connected cars do not automatically guarantee success for car sharing and autonomous cars. And while this is true, because there is a dependency of the ecosystem that needs to be developed, and every country has a different maturity level in developing the ecosystem. But overall, because of the pandemic, digitization of public infrastructure and public services is only being accelerated. And therefore, this will become a reality. So those are the takeaways. So in essence, what we're doing is we are creating digital twins of future mobility. Everything that moves has a mirror image of itself in the cloud, whether it's a smartphone or whether it's a car, truck, or a bus. How that is possible? That is what we saw in the previous few minutes. So that was my presentation today. And before I go, just want to tell you that there's more videos if you'd like to watch on my Mentor Max channel on YouTube, where I speak on smart mobility solutions and sharing my leadership lessons and a collection of other events where I've spoken. Thank you very much for your participation. And we can now take questions. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was such a wonderful presentation. We got to learn a lot on the digital transformation of the automotive industry today. Um, there are no questions as of now. Uh, I would like to say that each and every element involved in the presentation was explained so very well by you. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable time and knowledge with all of us. With this, I would like to conclude. The audience is the most important, pa important part of any program. We thank you all for being part of the BSKBA Youth Wing family and encouraging us to look forward to the next session every time. We thank the president of the association and the managing committee for giving us this opportunity and for their support and encouragement and helping us provide this platform for the vast talent pool of our association. We'd also like to thank Guru Prasad Bhatt, Sri Lakshmi Udupa, Priyanjali Rao, and Janavi Poti for all the coordination. Please subscribe to our channel and you can also follow us on Instagram by the name Youthwing BSKBA. Thank you so much for joining in. See you next time. Thank you.